idea to a 5,000 member company. The Flipkart story is not just about phenomenal success and mind-numbing numbers, but much more than that. It's about redefining customers' shopping experience. Sachin and Vinny Bunsell found themselves stuck in boring tech jobs after graduating from IIT Delhi. A stint at Amazon.com, the world's largest online book retailer, was the first chapter in their startup story. Inspired by Amazon, they began Flipkart.com in 2007. What started as an online bookstore with just 4 lakh rupees and 50,000 titles today is India's online mega store selling 17,500 items every day. Sachin and Vinny are now looking at grossing revenues of 2,500 crore rupees this financial year, but there are question marks on sustainability and profitability and the kind of cash the venture will need to burn over the next few years. It's time to talk business with Sachin Bhatso. Hello and welcome to this Young Turks tutorial. I'm Shireen Bhan and if you're wondering where we are, let me break the suspense for you. We're at the Flipkart headquarters in Bangalore and the reason we're here is because for the last year and a half, Young Turks has focused on the e-commerce market, on what e-tailers are actually doing to drive sustainability and profitability. So we decided to come down to Flipkart, bring with us a bunch of startups who are just getting into the business of e-commerce to talk about the lessons learned from the Flipkart story and what the road ahead looks like. like In April 2012, by 28-year-old Hari, is a specialized retailer of laptops, tablets, and laptop accessories online. Accessible to individual customers, Laptop Palate also focuses on offering affordable bulk deals to educational institutions and SMEs across India. With an average monthly turnover of 25 lakh rupees, Hari and team are confident of doing 1 crore rupees a month by October. started his entrepreneurial journey after quitting a cushy job at NetApp. 26-year-old Pavan Vilas Sundar teamed up with Prashant Kumar to provide a clutter-free search interface for e-commerce sites. Founded in 2011, Unboxed Human Search acts as a virtual salesperson on e-commerce sites and helps consumers search more effectively. This team of 13 at Bangalore also offer web and search analytics for e-commerce ventures. in 2011 by Amit Sharma and John Lee Go on Talk is a design driven company that creates t-shirts for the Indian market With the motto t-shirts are not a piece of clothing but a canvas for ideas Go on Talk challenges designers to create designs on tees More than just a place to buy t-shirts at Untalk you can submit a design or ideas for t-shirts and win more than 25000 rupees of Chennai Gokul Raj GK and Balaji Gopalan founded Zap Store in 2011 an e-commerce portal retailing gadgets like mobile phones cameras tablets music players and GPS systems Sounds like any other e-commerce venture well here's what they do different At Zap Store you the customer get to decide on buying the product of your choice at the price that you want With a monthly turnover of 5 lakh rupees Zap Store ships 55 orders a day Well, let me start by asking you, Sachin. Five years ago, when you envisioned where Flipkart was going to be, what was what was the dream that you actually had? Five years ago, we had no idea where this was going. Our our idea was just to start up, hmm. and uh, and see 
as we grow along, we see where it goes and, and, mm. and take it from there onwards. We didn't expect this to happen. Mm. Uh, over time, we have been able to expand our horizons and be able to see more and more of the market. There must have been a one-line vision <laughs> statement, mission statement. What was it? There was no napkin moment that happened. <laughs> Yes, the the, the one line was that we need online shopping should work in India, uh. and we will make it work. That was the idea. I think at at that time you you were just two years out of college. How much can you how much can you really know about the world around mm. you, right? So uh, we just started with that simple um, statement that online shopping should work as a concept. We should. Uh, we will make it work. Five years down the line, uh, the critics and the skeptics still continue to question on whether online shopping actually works. Yes, you're seeing numbers coming in. Yes, you're seeing the traffic coming in. But when are you going to start seeing the money coming in? It is possible to become profitable right now. Mm. But I don't think it's the right time to become profitable. Okay. It's a, it's a time to invest. It's a time to build. So so what what is the investment horizon <laughs> looking like for you at this point in time? And, and how long do you continue to be in investment mode? The way we see market right now, I believe, uh, I don't see in the next two or three years our investments are going to stop. Uh, we should keep investing behind the growth of the company, of the sector itself. Mm. So which is largely uh, on back-end infrastructure? Largely on back-end infrastructure, building customer trust, uh, being able to use uh, user behavior to effect to, to, to be able to influence and help them buy more. Mm. Um, I think these are the these are the challenges that is that we will solve over time. You don't believe it's prudent to pull back and start showing a return on investments and then pick up on the pace no, of investments. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, we uh, last year we did about hundred million dollars in sales, right? Uh, can we be profitable at $100 million of sales? Yes, definitely. It's a, it's a pretty decent amount of sales. But do we want to be? We want to be profitable at a $2 billion of sales or $3 billion of sales. Mm. That is where we want to turn profit, mm. profitable. No matter, uh, uh, we see market size as, as that mm. level. It will probably be very stupid of us to be thinking about profitability at uh, at such, and, at and, such and your small investors scale. and your investors have bought into this idea in exactly this that is why well. investors are interested in us there's a bunch of people who've decided to get onto the e-commerce bandwagon there's all kinds of e-tailers some online some purely online some online offline some specialists some generalists a lot of money being thrown at pretty much everybody who's in the market what do you say when people question the fact that is this for real all this will not matter uh, two years down the line. People will be saying very different things two years down the line. I've seen that change. What gives you the confidence? I mean, I've seen that change in my last five years. Uh, when we started e-commerce, it was a dead sector. Mm. We went to VCs, everybody said, basically, this is, this, is not the, this is not the sector we invest in. If you open a travel company, I will probably give you money. Because travel was hard then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. today it's e-commerce, right? Yeah. So I've seen that changing many times. Mm. Uh, uh, I think I think it's just a it's just a phase. People are basing their decisions on very short amount of data. It's a very thin margin, very hard business. There's no question about it. It requires solid execution. But can it be done? Yes, we believe so. Okay. Questions, guys. Coming from engineering background, so uh, how did you scale up an IT firm like Flipkart to this level from a startup? So uh, how much did your engineering background help you out in that? If you are into an internet business and 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 uh, you want to scale it up, it's 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 always great that if you yourself are able to understand some of the scale aspects of it especially. But what about the service side of it? Because, you know, the, the, tech, the tech part of it, as engineers you dealt with, but what about the service and the customer satisfaction and the customer delight that you pride yourselves on? How did that happen? So that we had to learn because we were writing code, we were packing books, we were delivering books, we were taking customer support calls, we were vendor, doing vendor relationships, uh, we were doing front end, we were like everything, right? So, what, what was the response from the family when when they saw you <laughs> perhaps packing books, delivering them, saying, you know, what have we done? What did we send you to IIT <laughs> Delhi for? Was that the response? Family was very supportive. Mm. Uh, I think uh, initially they were kind of shocked. Um, do they understand what you do now? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask my mom, she will probably not even. Think about shopping online. I think that the job is not. I can pass. I don't shop online, so. <laughs> oh, so, so. A job is not done yet.
Welcome back. You're watching the Young Turks tutorial with the Flipkart headquarters in Bangalore in conversation with the co-founder of Flipkart, Sachin Bansal, and our team of startups. There's a lot of talk about this, that there will be forced consolidation, that we will see people die, that you know, once investors lose their patience, we're not really going to see the kind of valuation bubble that we're currently perhaps in the midst of. What's your own sense? And, and you, you just did an acquisition. Do you see a lot more of that happening? We have been looking at what what are the gaps within our service and our offerings that a potential acquisition can can uh, uh, can fill up? So it it either fills up a large gap that we are facing, or it helps us consolidate the uh, supply and the demand mm. uh, in, in a category. Let's buy, for instance, was that driven by the need to acquire market share? It was. Uh, so what Let's Buy did for us is uh, it helped us uh, consolidate things from a supplier s side of things and from a consumer point of view. And, uh, you know, speaking of consolidation, do you see big ticket consolidation uh, in, in the industry? Because, you know, you've got a bunch of players who are doing exactly the same thing. Yes, I do think so. I think uh, consolidation will happen. Uh, differentiation is reducing. Online experience, I don't know whether customers are valuing a pure on better online experience as much yeah. right now. If you ask my mom, she will probably not even think about shopping online. I think that the job is not... I confess, I don't shop online, so... <laughs> oh, see, see, a job is not done yet. A job is not done yet. So I think, un unless we make you shop online, it's... But so I'm not a shopper, so <laughs> I, I, I don't shop offline either. So I, I'm, 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 I'm a bad example. So. Yeah, so I think, uh, so unless uh, in people like you and people like my mother and a, a lot of people that I know, yeah. for them online shopping until it becomes like the mainstream day-to-day -day activity like yeah. brushing your teeth, yeah. it's not, it's it, not it, going it, to be. Okay, you guys, is that, you're obviously hoping that it will become a, you know, brushing your teeth type activity, but what's the kind of patience that, that you're working with? One good thing with 2012 instead of 2007 or 8 is that you already have a little bit to play around with, yeah. right? So you, you can actually launch a real business. Right, which was not the case five years ago. Okay. Very difficult, I mean, maybe a few. So I think that uh, you already have a few million, five, ten, twenty, depending on what report you read, yeah. online shoppers, right, yeah. who are used to it. So you believe that this is a much more real environment to operate in than five years? I think eBay was one of the first e-commerce companies to advertise on TV last year, uh, and that, I think, was a transformational kind of inflection point. On the industry. Right, because yeah. then you get mass acceptance. And so we, for example, have shipped from, literally from Srinagar, a lot of our orders come from Srinagar, mm -hmm. all the way to Lakshadweep. A lot of tier two, tier, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five traction, sorry. Yeah. Uh, from uh, places you, and those, those people are just uh, disjoint from the traditional organized retail yeah. and so e-commerce becomes yeah, I, I, you know that's an interesting point and I want to talk about this because this business of the tier 2 tier 3 traction and every e-tailer that we're talking to seems to be talking about that as being a big catchment area uh, what is your experience been like and what are the lessons to be learned as far as targeting that group is concerned I truly believe uh, that tier 2 and tier 3 cities is where the growth is going to happen in the future. In the next two years, these are the areas which will grow mm -hmm. the market in. But in those cities where the job is still not done yet, yeah. I think a lot of people are still very apprehensive about or they still not don't trust the medium as a very reliable one. Yeah. Uh, I think that is where next two years of growth will come from. In 12 months, it will be the right time to become profitable. Mm. I like the way that you say it. We think it will be the right time. It's almost like the switch that you're going to turn on and off. Like profitability is a switch that you turn on and off <laughs> as and when you like. Can we do 20 questions, Dan? I'm going to throw in, guys, feel free to jump in here. Cash on delivery. I think it's definitely sustainable. It okay. solves a very important problem for customers. Online payment experience in India is so bad, cash on delivery is yeah. way ahead. Next question in my 20 questions, inventory management, which I'm sure is an issue that just about yeah. every yes. uh, e-commerce, uh, you know, startup yeah or established company, emerging company is faced with at this point in time and you have had trouble dealing with it as well. We firmly believe that inventory model 
is the way to scale. Uh, managing your inventory, your own warehouses is the way to scale up. You have, for instance, his company wanting to be a specialist laptop seller, buyer, you know, site as far as uh, mm -hmm. the online space is concerned. In a commoditized market, and in you, as you get increasingly commoditized with everybody wanting to do everything, uh, what to your mind will make sense? I think there will be space for all kinds of players in the market, and uh, it's not that it's not that everybody has to become a horizontal general player. Uh, uh, a vertical specific uh, experience spe tailored to that vertical. Yeah. I think that that works very well. Do you draw the line somewhere? I mean, we've done books, we've done CDs, we've done mobile phones, we've done laptops, we've done. You, do you draw the line somewhere? For that us, this is, yeah, this is for it. us. We don't. Uh, for us, we don't. No. <laughs> we, for us, uh, everything. We want to sell everything. Uh, so a barrel is back on, on the table, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the high margin, everybody is huh? dressing. Behind. Everything is under consideration. Uh, 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 after, after saying no way, that's not going to be something that we do. It's back on the table, is it? No, actually, no. Uh, we never said that. Uh, we no? never said that. I think uh, we were always uh, we always wanted to do it. Uh, okay. Just that the timing is very important. So for the us. other debate is this you know, hybrid offline, online model, which a lot of Indian retailers are trying to experiment with and have experimented with in the past. And the logic seems to be that, hey, if I've got my back end right, uh, I can go online and I can go offline as well. But is it really that simple? A hybrid ma model has had sex limited success uh, around the world. I think it's, it depends a lot on how it gets executed in India and how people uh, adapt it uh, here. Would but, you recommend it? Um, we are uh, we are an online company and we want to remain that way. I think we are we so are true believers that. See, this this is not something under consideration <laughs> that that a couple of years down the line you will say that no, but we never said this. <laughs> <laughs> What has your experience been like with funding? You've raised some angel money recently. What's the experience been like? It's been very bullish around the e-commerce sector, definitely. Mm. Uh, but uh, you know, specifically to what we work on, uh, it's, it's very bullish with technology per se. The funding in technology-based companies is pretty much you know, seeing the same kind of patterns as, mm. as the e-commerce is, is hotting up as well, you know, the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. So funding has been pretty decent uh, with technology uh, enabled. What is the realistic ex exit expectation that uh, an investor now has on the basis of whatever is the most accurate available data? I think our investors are very clear. This is a long-term game. Uh, they need to be invested in it for few, many more years, mm. I think, uh, before they can uh, expect and that's what we are telling our any anybody we talk to. I mean, so are we anywhere close to an IPO as far as an Indian e-commerce business is concerned? In next two years, no. And would uh, I mean, of course, an Indian listing would be very very difficult until and unless you suddenly within two years start to deliver on profitability. Probably, yeah. But uh, so it would make sense then naturally to look outside of I India have, for so a listing. So as a company, we have not decided that yet. But it would make sense two years down the line for you. Uh, in Indian listing, yes, why not? I mean, uh, we are evaluating, we are open to all options, right? What do you think is the one thing or many things which limit this growth story? I think internet penetration is something that uh, can become a bottleneck if it doesn't grow as, uh, or the, especially the broadband penetration in India. I think that is one uh, one thing that number that we are really looking at very closely. Um, if that doesn't grow as is it, it is expected, I think it can it can reduce to it can it can reduce our growth rate. Yeah. So, yeah, speaking of broadband, do you think other things like you know mobiles? Maybe we have uh, a huge penetration of cell phones in India. Is Flipkart looking at that? aspect as well? Yes, uh, we are looking at it seriously. I think mobile is going to be a very important part of our strategy going forward. Would you be okay with uh, being bought out? We are so. probably not okay. We are not looking at uh, at, a, at selling off uh, uh, to a competitor or to anybody else. I think uh, we so from the very the beginning... global online giant came calling, <laughs> what, what, would, what would Flipkart's response be? We have been building a long-term sustainable organization uh, and not just a quick uh, business which we can which we scale up quickly and then sell it off. I think that's not what our strategy has been from the very beginning. We want to build a long-term sustainable business. Our dream today is to build one of the best uh, and the largest organizations of India. So before I let you go, uh, what would your key advice be to young entrepreneurs like them who are looking at this business and hopefully wanting to create institutions, long-term organizations, not looking for the quick pop at the exit. The way I see it is there, there are two 
biggest stakeholders in this uh, in the in this business of e-commerce. I think uh, one is your customers, mm. which are the largest stakeholders. The second is your employees. I think uh, your you need to you need to make sure that the the, the people that you're getting in matches match with uh, their thought process matches with what you what you do. I, I know what your five year plan is. What's the plan of action for the next twelve months? Next twelve months, we want to uh, become profitable. Uh, that's will our, you be profitable? Yes. You will. Yes, that's what we are. That, that's what we want to be. Okay. Uh, because that's uh, I think internally uh, we believe it's the right time to in 12 months it will be the right time to become profitable um, and uh, uh, I like the way that you say it we think it will be the right time it's almost like the switch that you're going to turn on and off like profitability is a switch that you turn on and off <laughs> as and when you like so it how did the Bansal brothers who are Bansal not brothers, brothers get together <laughs> I think it's a big coincidence. We, I, we wish we had a different surname. It's a family like business. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a family, a family business. business. <laughs> <laughs> Banya family business, right? <laughs> Uh, hopefully it will not be run as a Banya family business. Sachin, appreciate you joining us here on the Young Test tutorial. We wish you the very best of luck with the 12-month plan and the five-year plan. Of course, I wish all of you guys the very best of luck. I hope that you have taken away something that you could possibly use in your businesses when you when you leave here. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up this Young Turks tutorial. We leave the Flipkart headquarters in Bangalore and see you next week. Till then, from all of us here on the team, goodbye and many thanks for watching. Thank you.